Hey, welcome back. We're in the studio today, so apologies for the echo and the creaky chair, which are still not fixed. I'm going to be showing you how to take dark and moody photographs. Now, if you're on Instagram at the moment, you'll know that they're very trendy, especially at this time of year. And there's a lot of misconceptions about how we achieve these images. So I'm going to go through the fundamentals of the photographic process to achieve the shot. Then in a separate video, I'm going to show you exactly how to edit these photographs. Now, there's a few aspects to creating a dark and moody shot. One is, and the most important is, the choice of props, background, and subject. If you choose to photograph a pint of milk on a white background, achieving a dark and moody shot isn't gonna be so easy. So for today's shot, I've gone some very dark browns and blues for the backgrounds, and then I've not used any props, but I've used a massive pile of pumpkins because they're on offer in the supermarket. And I've gotta use them for something. So I've got my pumpkins and I've got my moody background. And that's sort of already setting the tone and setting the mood for what we're going to do here. The next thing we need to look at is how we light it. Now, a dark image, you'd naturally think less light, weaker light, whatever it may be, but that's not the case. And a lot of it comes down to the inverse square law. I'm gonna pop something in here to explain the inverse square law to you quickly, and then we'll get back on with this. So I'm gonna explain the inverse square law to you. Now there's two parts to this. Well, there's actually only one, but I'm gonna explain it in two parts. I'm not gonna go through all the numbers because it will just go straight over your head if you're not into this sort of thing. And if you are into it, you can go and look into them. I'm gonna explain it in a very sort of slapdash approach because that's the way that I use it, if I'm honest. It's very rare that I sit there calculating with numbers. I go for a rough look and then once I've got it roughly where I need it, all I have to do is fine tune it because I can see on the computer screen. So. So first off, let's talk about how light disappears. And this is basically what the inverse square law is looking at. So, where's a big heavy lump? There we go. If we imagine that up here is the full power of the light and along here are meters, inches, but units which work in a nice linear fashion. When we're really close to the light, we get lots of it. And then all of a sudden, it drops off like this. And it is an extreme drop off. And I'll go into this in another video, but it's one of the reasons why massive modifiers exist to create soft light when you need even lighting. And there's a whole, whole world of lighting information out there which relates to this that I don't think most of the industry get. Now, as we end up at this end of the scale, the light is more even because the difference between five and six meters away or inches away is very diff is very close from here to here. So that means the difference between the brightest point and the shadow won't be that great. However, over here, between one meter, this might be say F10, and then over here, this is gonna be very dark. So as we bring the light closer, the shadows become deeper. Now I hope this makes sense. You're gonna pop a link in the bio because there's some really good diagrams with all the numbers on there. And it'll say things like, here we have F10, then we jump down to a quarter of that. And then I think it's something like a ninth, 16th, I'll just quickly Google that so I can't remember. But you can see how quickly it drops off from here to losing three quarters of power in one unit of measurement, which is pretty extreme. Now on the other side of this, we have the spread of light. Let's be paper efficient today. Let's draw a new graph up here. This is distance, and this is one unit of light. And as our light goes along the distance, it just keeps growing, and so on and so forth. It gets equally bigger, and it keeps expanding and expanding and expanding as it goes along. And this is why having a honeycomb grid here, if your subject is here, is of no use. Whereas having a light here, like a softbox, and then having a grid here, that is of use. And it's these fundamentals which really help us understand how to create the dark and moody images. Now this isn't textbook exactly with the numbers, this is just a bit of a, a visual representation to hopefully get you in the ballpark. I'm gonna link down below to some really good videos on this and some really good pictures, I guess, is the best way to describe it. So I'm not really sure still what I'm allowed to put in my YouTube videos. But this is a fundamental of lighting, whether you're using flash, available light, whatever you do, you must understand this. 
So now that you understand this, you know that we need to have a light source that's pretty close. But as well as having a close light source, we need to modify that light. And that sometimes means modifying the modifier, which is quite common in professional photography. We often buy a softbox and then do all sorts of witchcraft to it to make it actually look the way we want it to. Now, everything I'm doing here today, you can do with a window light, an LED light. You don't have to have flash. I just have flash because it's all I really own apart from this video light up here, which isn't particularly pleasing. So we have two options off the bat. One is, uh, there we go, this here, which is a light with a honeycomb grid. And this is actually what we're going to use, but this is the honeycomb grid. If you see that's got an angle to it, so as we change the angle, the light disappears. I've never done that before in a video, that's quite cool. Red. Now, from what we know from the inverse square law, using this alone is not going to do the job, because although this is gridded, with the distance we need to light our particular scene, which although needs to be close, can't be too close, because we need the light to go right across it, that grid's then going to splay out. So the light will hit the grid, and because this grid's gonna be quite far from the shot, it'll then spread out. So what I've got here is a grid on a stick, which is called a dabber. Uh, they're using the dark room a lot back in the day. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring this closer to the image, so it grids the image at a closer point, but whilst keeping the distance of the light a bit further away, so we get the even spread. It's not that we want uneven light, we just wanna choose carefully where we place the light. Now in terms of the light, we're not going to use this because I actually want soft diffused light. So we're going to use a soft box, nothing fancy, it's just a uh, Bowens. It's a Bowens soft box, it's about a meter wide. It's about the size of a window. We might also poke some tracing paper in front of it, which is what this rollback here is. And if you have a window, I'd get the tracing paper straight onto the window. Now that's modifying the light, but as well as this, we need to control the spill and the cast. So to keep it dark, we obviously don't want bounce cards in this, which is what we're normally reaching for. We want black cards or flags. So this bad boy here is a bit of black card. It's black on one side, white on the other. I have these all over the studio. You can find them everywhere in here. We even have one or several actually, specifically with holes cut in them. And these are to poke the camera through so we really don't get any bounce going on. And then you'll see in the background, I've got my massive foam core bit here. And on top of that is a stage curtain, which really absorbs light. It's like a really thick, felty fabric. So all of these things we're gonna to utilize to build the set to create the look we're after. Now I'm gonna stop the lens down quite far, probably to around F10, because I want to really crush those shadows. And it's all about the difference between bright and dark. So if I happen to get enough light on the light parts to reach F10, that means the bits where the light isn't hitting it are really going to drop down. And then we'll fine tune this. Whereas if we did it at 2.8, the difference between the perfectly exposed bit at 2.8 and the shadow bit might not be so much with the scene that we have. Of course, you could bring the light closer. And by doing that, we create 2.8 on one side and probably F0.7 on the other side, going back to the inverse square. But that's not the look we're going for. So it's all about compromise working out what you want and then working backwards through the physics of photography to achieve the shot. So I'm gonna jump into this now, start building the shot up, I'm gonna get the set built and then I'm gonna go through with you exactly what I've done and why I've done it. Bowen's head in the background. It looks quite big here. It's not actually. It's about the size of my arm. I don't have big arms if that's any help to you. Then over here we've got the 5DS with the Zeiss Milvis which is tethered into this computer here. I've got some weird double computer thing going on today because Mac don't make enough USB ports which is really annoying. Then if we come through to the shot we have our pumpkins. It was dial this ISO up to give us some noise. There we go on a nice dark background. Curtains here. Board down here. Then over here we've got the scrim, and if you see here, it's just the tiniest slither of light. There's a baby pumpkin for 
scale just the tiniest of slithers and we'll just move this backwards and forwards and I find it particularly helpful to make sure that the backboard is flagged off so it's a really dark moody background and then I let some extra spill come in over the top just to help with the ambient. Now you don't have to have all this proper pro kit, I say pro kit, that's stage curtain. This could literally be some black fabric you get down from the market, this board here could be fabric, this can be card or fabric, tracing paper, and this can be a window. It will do the exact same thing. The only difference is, rather than moving the light left and right, you move your set left and right closer to the window to work in with the inverse square law. I feel that this bit here could do with a little less shadow. So it's gonna pop a tiny, tiny little bounce card in. That's a bit too much. And that was the smallest little bit of fill there. So I think what we'll do is we'll get that in post instead because I think the detail's still there. So I've had to bring the second laptop up here. This is recording video. This is screen recording, tethering, and all the rest of it. Max just don't make enough USB points. It drives me mental. But there we go. So we've got the setup done. I didn't end up using the dabber, dibber, little grid thing. But we have used a lot of black fabric. And I've achieved the look I wanted to. It's dark, it's moody, and we can dial it up and dial it down. And this is the important thing in photography, is understanding how you can adjust the lighting to suit your needs. Because sometimes you might have a client who goes, well, do you know what? I want it even darker. I just want to see that middle pumpkin because that's the one we sell. The rest are just sort of, you know, we don't have as high a mark upon them. Or it might be the case that they want to show you more because the pumpkins are what they're... It, it, there's a whole host of reasons for this. But this is how I go about it. Now, I'm going to show you how I edit it in a separate video because that's a whole of the task itself. And there's a specific way that we edit these sorts of videos compared to perhaps a, a light and airy one. Perfect, so that's the shot we're looking for. It's just come through on my computer. It looks exactly how I wanted it to. We've used the inverse square law and then we've modified the modifier and shaped the light to give us the shot we're looking for. We can dial this up and down as we go along. And this is what's really important about photography. It's not knowing how to do a set lighting setup. It's knowing how you can adjust it and fine tune it to suit your own needs. So I hope this is of use to you. If you do enjoy these videos, do hit subscribe, do hit like. Have a go at this yourself. Tag me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram all the time. I probably need to have an intervention of some sort. But tag me so I can see your efforts. It'd be great to see them. You don't need all of this fancy kit I have. I just have it because it's my job to have it. Because when somebody goes, we want this tweak in this ever so slightly bit like this, I have to be able to produce it. If you don't have a director screaming down your ear saying it must be like this, it must be like that, don't worry about the kit. You need a camera or a phone, some blankets, some white cardboard, some black cardboard and a roll of tracing paper. I'll put a link to these bits in the description as well because the tracing paper is an absolute godsend. Yeah.